Hey, all Thank you all for coming. I'm excited to be here at my second breakpoint. Um, so I'll be talking today about a new product that we just announced last week uh, called Polaris. Uh, but before that, let me tell you a little bit about how we got here and why we're building this. So for those who don't know, I'm the co-founder of a project called Osmosis. Osmosis is a DEX app chain, um, which means it's a DEX built as its own standalone blockchain. Um, it's currently the dominant DEX in the Cosmos ecosystem, and you know it's connected to over a hundred different blockchains. It's the primary liquidity venue for most of the major Cosmos ecosystem assets, TIA, AKT, UIDX, and we're growing beyond that as well uh, with a big focus on Bitcoin liquidity. Um, and a lot of the, you know, one of the main things that a lot of our community loves us for is our commitment to like stellar UX. And we do that by a number of different ways, uh, you know, taking advantage of a lot of the app chain features, building things like one-click trading. You can trade rapidly without having to, you know, uh, sign with your wallet every single time. Uh, the Osmosis chain lets you pay your gas in any token, including USDC, Bitcoin, Sol, whatever you want. Uh, we have native cross-chain swaps. You can swap from one Cosmos chain to another Cosmos chain without making uh, any transactions on Osmosis. And we're working on native privacy stuff so you can uh, stop prying eyes from you know, copying your trading strategies. But you know, we have a problem. We've built a lot of these amazing features into Osmosis that have created this great trading experience. But we face this thing we call the great chain divide where the problem is liquidity is very fragmented across all these ecosystems. And while we've created this amazing product for the Cosmos ecosystem, we, we struggle to how do we reach users who are elsewhere. And the problem today is almost every application, most of the infrastructure in crypto, wallets, liquidity venues, the interfaces that service them are designed in a very chain-centric way, right? But the problem is users are not chain maxis, right? The apps might be chain maxis right now, but the users, they just want to trade everything. And we want to build apps for users, not for the chains. And so we were looking at, okay, how do we solve this problem? Like users have wallets that they like to use. And you know, liquidity is very sticky in the chains that, they, that they're built on. So we realized the best place to tackle this is at the interface layer. So this is why we built Polaris, the token portal. Just like a web portal, it's a single interface that allows you to tap into liquidity across all these different venues and chains. Instead of telling you more about it, I'll show you. So, you know, you log in, you, you can come in, the first thing you do is you go ahead and connect your wallet. Uh, when you connect a wallet, you can choose which ecosystems you want to connect it for. So I'll connect my uh, Phantom wallet for both Solana and Bitcoin. Uh, you can also choose to, uh, you know, filter by ecosystem. So I'll see like, okay, what are the EVM wallets I can connect? I'll go ahead and connect my MetaMask. And there, cool. So I have my Phantom wallet connected for Solana and Bitcoin and MetaMask connected for, you know, the slew of EVM chains. Now I can go ahead and open up the portfolio drawer. This is one of the most useful features for me personally because you can now see all your balances across all the networks aggregated. And it even aggregates like-kind assets. So for example, I can come over to Bitcoin and it will collapse my, you know, it'll have both my BTC on Bitcoin mainnet and my WBTC on Ethereum. Same for something like Ethereum, right? It doesn't matter whether I'm holding my ETH on Ethereum or on an L2, whether it's held as wrapped ETH or even as an as a LSD, right? It collapses all of those into one place. If users really want to see the more network-centric view, they can do that. We will break down the assets by, by, by network it's on. And when you're trading as well, you can choose, hey, where do I want to receive my Bitcoin? Do I want to receive it on Bitcoin mainnet, on Ethereum as WBTC, on Stacks as SBTC? But we really believe that you know the end state of crypto UX is that users should not really have to even be thinking about what network they're receiving on. So let's go ahead and make a trade. Uh, you, you know, you choose the asset you want to sell, and then you open up the selector. You can, you know, use the network selector on the left. But once again, we really want people to try to use this all networks view, which just aggregates everything. So I can go ahead and search for the token I want to buy, um, and I'll, you know, it'll say, hey, cool, I can buy this token on you know, base, and it will show up in my MetaMask wallet. Well, let's try to do something even more challenging, right? Instead of buying DGEN, let's go ahead and buy something like TON. You'll notice I don't actually even have a TON wallet. How do, how, so what can I do? You know, I can go ahead and it'll give me the option of connecting a TON wallet, and there's a bunch of TON wallets that you can install, but I don't want to go install a new TON wallet, right? So instead, 
we have this option called Polaris Vaults. So Polaris Vaults are one of the you know, unique features that we built. So what essentially happens is there is a, the Polaris Vault is a way of extending your existing wallet to support networks that they don't already support. It will use an MPC service run currently by eight independent nodes, but eventually by the Osmosis Validator set to create a new key that's custody, that's controlled by your existing wallet. Um, you can also choose to uh, deactivate Polaris uh, vaults and you know do it manually, but the problem is then you'd have to sit there and sign every single transaction manually. So instead, we have this autopilot feature built into the Polaris vault, vault where you know what it will do is it will you know secure the vault with your existing wallet, and you'll see that here's a very complex trade, right? It's, to go from Sol on Solana to Ton on the Ton network, you have to do many steps. We're going to swap to USDC using Jupiter. We're going to bridge to Osmosis with CCTP. We're going to swap to USDT on Osmosis. We're going to bridge that USDT to Ton, and then we're going to swap to Ton on DDoS. Right? These are like five different steps. If you were going to do this by yourself, you'd have to go to five different sites. You probably don't. I bet most of you probably don't even know what Ton bridge to use, right? Like. But instead, what we do is we aggregate all of this in one. It's all run by autopilot. You know, all you have to do is two transactions. One is you go ahead and prepay your gas fees, right? So part of the problem is when you're doing this, you might be, you might have figured out how to get to USDT on ton, but oops, you can't pay your gas fees. That's why what we do is we automate all the gas fee payments for you using our gas station. And then once you've initiated the autopilot, you can log off, go do your own thing, go, you know, buy something else, and this whole transaction will run in the background automatically, and you know, I'm gonna skip forward, and you'll end up with ton in your ton, uh, in your Polaris vault. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, well, that's Polaris, your token portal, a uh, place where you'll be able to trade all tokens across all chains in one app. Uh, if you want an early access, check over, go to the site polaris.app, and you can sign up for the early access, and you can follow us on Twitter at at Polaris app. Thank you.